Hi, I'm Alex Wazer, and welcome to Ask a Dev. Today's question comes from Kumar, who wants to know what the best features of ECMAScript 6 are. So that's kind of a loaded question since there's tons of major and minor additions to the language, and I won't be able to cover even half of these features, but I'll tell you some of my favorites. For those that have never heard of ECMAScript before, it's the language standardization for various implementations, sometimes referred to as dialects, including JavaScript, JScript, and ActionScript. ECMAScript 6, or ES6 for short, is the latest iteration of the language, and it's going through its final refinement and bug fixes before the official release. So let's get down to some of the features. The overarching theme of ES6 seems to be a lot of syntactic sugar to current idioms, which helps make the intent of your code a little more explicit. For example, ES6 introduces the class keyword, which allows you to add constructors and functions in a new syntax closer to other C-based languages. You can later extend those classes with the extend keyword for a different way of doing inheritance. You can still use previous methods of prototypical inheritance, but this helps make your code less ambiguous. A lot of this sugar feels very similar to CoffeeScript, which includes one of my favorite, yet very simple features, arrow functions. This is essentially an easier way of doing uh, functions that Lexly bind its context. This means no more having to write bind this or caching the value of this for later use. Other features similar to CoffeeScript include rest parameters and default arguments and functions. ES6 also introduces some additions that are implementations of common JavaScript libraries. This includes ES6 modules, which are a native take on required.js and common.js modules for requiring external files. The syntax is slightly different, but the concept of importing and exporting files is roughly the same. It also implements native promises to replace various deferred and asynchronous libraries out there like jQuery deferred, RSVP, and Q. This allows you to perform asynchronous and sometimes synchronous operations and run blocks of code once they complete or they fail. And the last thing I'll mention is block scoping. With ES6, they introduced let, which is a substitution of var to achieve block scoping. Currently, when you create a variable with var, it's hoisted to the top of its scope. Let allows you to create variables that are scoped in the place that it's declared. For example, you can now create variables inside of for loops whose value is not hoisted outside of that loop. If you'd like to learn more, there are a bunch of great articles out there that go more in depth into each of these topics, including the ones that I skipped. Start reading them now because ECMAScript 6 is expected to be finalized sometime in June this year and has already started to be partially implemented in most major browsers. That's it for this episode. Tweet your questions with hashtag AskAdev or leave them in the comments. There was that one little...